Today's lesson is on solving equations, and it's called preserving equality. When you think of preserving equality, you can think of a scale and trying to make sure it always stays balanced. So what this means is that anything we do to one side, we need to do to the other. So we'll look at some different examples of this. For question number one, they're going to get you to fill in the box. So 9 plus 5 minus something equals 9. Well, to get back from 9 plus 5, which is 14, to get back to 9, we need to subtract another group of 5. So that's what you would put in your box. For question 2, instead of you filling in the number, you're going to fill in the operation. So 8 plus 3 and then we need to do something to the 3 to get back to 8. Now one of your hints is if it's 3 both times, we're going to undo the opposite operation. So if we add 3, to get rid of that adding 3, we need to subtract 3. So our subtraction sign will go in the circle. Question number 3, we'll put several of these steps together. And so 17 plus 3, we have to choose the operation and the numeral to get back to 17. So if we add 3, the opposite is to subtract 3. So that would go on the line. Question 4, we'll take it to the next step by changing it into words. So they'll ask you to undo the operation. So to undo adding 4, if we think of these, the opposite of adding would be subtracting. So on the line, you would write subtract 4. Just to give you a quick reminder, the opposite of adding is subtracting. So those are the two you would use to undo each other. And the opposite of multiplying is divide, dividing. So those are the two operations you would use to undo each other. For questions 5 and 6, it will look a little bit more complicated, but you just need to follow along. So they'll ask you to start with a specific number. So in this example, it's 4. Do the operations and then undo them. So you need to follow the arrows. You'll start at the top left, which is where you'd expect, and you're going to move down, but then you're actually going to go back up. So to give you this example, we're going to start with the number 4. So after 4, we're going to add 8. So 4 plus 8 is 12. Then we're going to take that number and multiply it by 3. We'll do the next step. So 12 times 3 is 36. Then we need to do 36 subtract 6, which gives you 30, and then divide by 5. So 30 divided by 5 is 6. Then we're following the arrow across to the right. We're going to multiply by 5. So 6 times 5 is 30. And then we add 6. 30 plus 6 is 36. Divide by 3. 30 divided by 3 is 12 and subtract 8, 12 to minus 8 is 4. So did we finish with the number that we started with? Yes, we started with 4 and we ended with 4. Question 7 asks you to show the result of each operation. And you'll notice in your Jump Math book at the top of this page, there's a gray box that will just give you some clues about what these operations look like. So multiply x by 7. So when we multiply a number and a variable, we just put them side by side, right? x times 7 is 7x. Then our next example is add 4 to x. So we're adding 4, but we're adding it to x, so the x will come first. So x plus 4 is how that will look. So all you're doing is taking their words and turning it into an expression. Question eight is going to ask us to do the opposite. So they'll give us an expression and they're asking what happens to the variable x. Well, two x means x is multiplied by two. So you would put that part on the line. So we're basically reversing question seven. Question 9 asks you to write the correct operation and number to get back to the variable. So if we look at n plus 3, 
the opposite of adding 3 to get us back to n is to subtract 3, okay? If we're multiplying by 4, then the opposite would be to divide by 4. So, oh, we're going to put divide by 4. We don't need to put another n there. The same thing goes when we just have the coefficient. Remember, this is code for multiplying as well. So 6m, we're going to divide by 6 because that undoes the multiplication. And when we're subtracting 2, then we're going to add 2. This will basically help you with question number 10 as well. You don't need a separate set of examples and instructions. Question 11 is where this all comes together. And it's going to ask you to solve for x by doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. So if we look at 3x, the relationship between 3 and x is multiplication. To undo multiplying by 3, we need to divide by 3. And remember when we talked about the scales, we're going to do the same thing to both sides. So 3x divided by 3 equals 12 divided by 3. Then we'll solve. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. So we're just left with x equals, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. Now, to check, they're going to get you to substitute 4 for x. So when we write 3x equals 12, we're going to put the 4 in brackets where the x was. And then we can solve it. So 3 times 4 is 12. So this is correct. And that verifies our solution. So for today, you're doing pages 37 to 38. Remember to mark all of your work, do the corrections, and I'll have a Google form on Google Classroom for you to do for homework tonight.